Now after installation and piping, you're ready to start your startup checklist. First thing we're going to do is recheck that alignment one more time, making sure that the couplings haven't shifted during piping. Next, we're going to recheck our pipes and valves. Go ahead and walk the system and make sure that all the valves are open, all the connections are tight, and that liquid is easily going to flow through the suction piping when the pump is started. You're going to want to confirm that the relief valve is properly oriented and properly set. Internal relief valves on Viking pumps are typically located on the head and should be pointed with the adjusting screw cap towards the suction piping. System valves are usually located in the discharge piping very near the pump. You're going to want to confirm that all the lubricants have been filled. Grease fittings have been greased and oil chambers have been filled. There are typically grease fittings on the pump, especially the bearing housing, and oil chambers can be found either on a gear reducer or on load pumps. You're going to want to rotate the pump shaft by hand, making sure the pump turns freely. Now on larger units, this may not be feasible. You may need to use a wrench or a lever to try and uh, give yourself the leverage to rotate that pump shaft, but you do want to confirm that it is free to rotate before you energize the motor. The next step is go ahead and energize that motor, but just jog it to confirm rotation. A lot of Viking units are run with three phase motors, and if two of those phases are wired backwards, the motor will run in the opposite direction. If that's the case, go ahead and switch and correct that wiring, jog the motor again to confirm that the pump and motor are rotating correctly. Next, we're going to put all our guards back in place. The coupling guards and window guards need to be reinstalled before we start up. Additionally, we'd also make sure that any heated pump applications, such as pumps used for asphalt or wax, are also heated and up to temperature before we begin. Next step is go ahead and get the pump started. We want to monitor the flow, and if liquid is not flowing in the first 60 seconds, we're going to want to shut down and recheck as to why. If it's not flowing, we may need to go through this checklist again to make sure we haven't missed anything, or go on to my troubleshooting series and see why there's no flow coming out. Ideally, within the first minute, liquid should start to flow and it's been a successful startup. Your Viking pump is ready for many years of service.